Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving on this day that we give thanks for our many blessings. And uh, sometimes, sometimes people have a hard time finding blessings, realizing the, the blessings that they have. And, and because there's so much going on in our lives and there's so much pain, hurt, well, we mourn those that are no longer with us. Um, and you know, sometimes a, a day like Thanksgiving, a day like Christmas, any holiday can be especially difficult, um, especially the first year that we are missing someone. And, and I know that there are many that are missing someone for the first time this Thanksgiving. And so may you find joy May you find a reason to be thankful, and may you always trust that God is there. Um, we read in the Bible, it said, says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in all things, in all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And, you know, sometimes it's really hard to, to, to try to figure out, how can I, in this circumstance, give thanks? And it isn't to give thanks for the circumstance necessarily, but no matter what's going on in our lives, there is still, still much joy, much to be thankful for, and especially to, th to be thankful for the love that God has for us. And, and to know that those that are no longer with us um, continue to, to be in God's presence and to be in God's care. Um, my uncle Walt passed away earlier this week, and his funeral is Saturday afternoon. And and uh, his wife died quite some years ago. But but for their three kids, this is a, a different different holiday again. And not not to bring any you know anything different upon me and my family, but it's just um, the last few years, Walt has been suffering with Alzheimer's, which you know when when you have a loved one that. Um, is affected with Alzheimer's dementia, you, you actually lose the person twice. It's first you lose the person that knows you and loves you, and and uh, even though you know and love them, uh, but the second time when they die, then it's even more final. And we find that so often in life that it's you know there are there are difficulties and there are hard times to figure out how to be thankful. And, and I was thinking about that in, in regard to this reading in Ezekiel, that so much of the reading of the prophets, I mean, Ezekiel 22 and 23 that we look at today, uh, you know, it, it's again God speaking to these unfaithful Jews that are uh, worshiping idols and doing, living lives that, that are not pleasing to God. And just you know, ignoring God and, and forgetting that way, and and I but it, but then I think about okay, God is speaking to these unfaithful, but how does the remnant feel? How does the remnant hear this? Because God always says that there will be a remnant, that I will rebuild my nation, I will rebuild my people, because there will be a remnant who are faithful. So how how in the midst of the city of Jerusalem, and that's in chapter twenty three today. I'm not going to really quote a lot of the depth in there, but in chapter 23, it's a story of uh, twin or daughters, you know, two daughters of, of one mother, and their names are Ohala and Ohaliba, or whatever, and and one of them is, is Samaria, and the other is Jerusalem, Israel, you know, and so God is comparing his people to these, these daughters who are wanderlust who are chasing after everything who rather than being happy and content with who they are and what they are they're they're seeking and searching out and being corrupted by the others around them and uh, and but I, and I think about that of all of the of all of the corrupt people in these cities that that still don't hear God's word that don't hear this word of grace this word of, of love, this word of, of welcome, this this word of a God, of the God who loves and, and, and wants to provide for them. 
They can't hear his word. But what about those who are faithful, that do hear God's word and, and, and suffer the same punishments as those who are unfaithful, as those who are the sinners, as those who are worshiping the idols? You know, it's, you know in this, as we read about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, it was, you know, Moses pleading, if I can find 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Couldn't find 10 faithful people in that whole city, but yet, but yet God saw fit to save Lot. And, well, by chance, Lot's wife didn't make it because she couldn't bear not to look back and to, you know, oh, how much, how it was so good, you know, and that was what, that's what the Israelites had said when they were in the wilderness. Oh, if we were only back in Egypt where we had all the food and all the, everything was provided for us, forgetting the hard work, forgetting that they weren't free people. You know, they, sometimes it's hard to let go of those things from the past. Sometimes it's hard to change who we are. It's hard to, you know, stop smoking. It's hard to get sober. It's hard to, you know, get straight if you're messed up with drugs or whatever. It's hard to change your friends if your friends are leading you down the wrong path. It's hard to get out of a gang if they're doing the wrong thing. Change is hard. And this is one of the things that we learn by by reading these these books of the Bible with the prophets coming and speaking God's word and and the word falling upon deaf ears and um, you know, the people just continue. And it isn't just it isn't just the poor people. It isn't just the wealthy people. It isn't just the common people. It's it's the priests. It's the the leaders. It, it's everybody is is in there. But I've often thought about you know how how does this remnant feel? These people who are faithful to God. Ezekiel for one. I mean the prophet Jeremiah, uh, Isaiah. I mean these. And Amos and Obadiah and Jose and these these prophets, how do they feel when they see what's going on and when they bring God's word in and they see that nothing changes? They see that the people go on, continue to live as they have been in ignorance of God and maybe not just ignorance, but just, you know, they, they, don't, they don't care. It's apathy. And that's, I think, one of the one of the biggest things that, that that is wrong in our world today is that you know there isn't there isn't this care. There's I mean there's there's no concern. It's you know if it's not happening to us, well it's okay. I mean we just turn the other way and and look around and you know look past it. But but God continues to speak to us and God continues to call us and invite us to to be faithful to come back to hear His word. And, uh, you know, in these two chapters, again, you know, it just, it just continues to be, seems like more bad news. You know, like chapter 23, I'm going to just read verse 49. They shall repay you for your lewdness and you will bear the penalty for your sinful idolatry. You know, and I mean, this, this God that the Israelites know who, who is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and mercy is, is at his rope's end. You know, and you know, no, matter, no matter how peaceful someone seems, no matter how giving someone seems to be, no matter how, uh, no matter how much some, someone wants to work with you and, and you know, there will come a time that if you continue to ignore them, if you continue to take advantage of them, if you continue to just walk all over them, there's a time when they will walk away. And that's what happens to the Israelites. That they have, they have done idol worship and they have ignored the prophets. And they, I mean, Ezekiel is a prophet to the people for, I, I think, was it like seven years we started? You know, that he was prophesying, speak, bringing God's word before the fall of Jerusalem. And, and they had heard these, these words from Isaiah, that, that this will happen. But yet they didn't change. They didn't open their hearts. They didn't open their minds. 
this Sunday is the first Sunday in November, and, and we, we always, on this first Sunday, it's always an apocalyptic, end times reading. And, and sometimes we get very complacent about God's second coming, because it hasn't happened for 2,000 years. Wonder, when will it happen? Will it ever happen? You know? But as Christians, as people of God, we trust God's word. And, and in trusting God's word, it, it helps us to be able to be thankful on this day when not everything is going just as we would have it go. We may be, you know, mourning the death of someone. We may be battling cancer. We may be battling another illness that, um, that slows us down. Uh, spoke just the other day with a man who'd had his leg amputated at his knee and about the time his prosthesis is going to come he gets an infection so it's all set back but yet but yet there is joy it, it's it's in looking in the right places and and in and being open to God and being open to God's word because that's what God would have for us to have joy to have joy in our lives